Well, hello, man cavers. Today, we're going to look at two Jaguars. Do a little comparison with the interiors and the exteriors. And there they both are. Back in a moat. Welcome to the man cave. Let the games begin. Right, here we are. You've seen this car, my pride and joy. You've seen it many times. At the moment, and for the last couple of weeks, you've probably noticed this one in the background, which I've been caretaker of for a couple of weeks. This one is an XK8, X1, X100, sorry, the code name, and this is the pre-facelift with the recessed bumper, so this is the earliest original XK8 shape. This one is the X150. This is an XKR. So this one has the supercharger. This one's just normally aspirated. So we're going to start by looking around these cars. And I want you to tell me which one you think is more quintessentially Jaguar. Now I'm biased because I own this motor and I don't own that one. I have driven that one, and I can tell you categorically now, it's going to be no surprise, night and day, that is way, way faster than this one. Way faster. Um, it's a night and day difference. This one's 4 litre V8, normally aspirated, 300 horsepower. This one's 4.2 supercharged V8, more modern, and packs best part of 450 horsepower. There's going to be a marked increase in performance, and there is. So we're not going to bother driving them because that thing is mind-bogglingly fast. This one's just comfortably fast. Anyhow, we're going to get into the interiors. So, let's have a good look around this one. So here I have the key for my XK8. There we go. We have a push-button remote. And in we go. Now then, this interior is very very jaguar it is absolutely beautiful in here let me let me cop a squat as they say and we can see the interior in this it's all walnut it's all leather there's no fake plastics in here everything is either leather or wood and it is sumptuous I do love the XK8 interiors. I really do love them. I think they are something different. But yeah, we have the recessed dials. You know, we have the six gauges. It's very Jaguar with the buttress in there, your J-gate gear selector, and everything is just very, very Jaguar. Now, the only reason I'm showing you around here is because the interior in that car is way different. Do you think that one is as Jaguar-ish as this one? Note the shape of the dashboard. Um, now, let me get this right. The shape of the dashboard is the profile of the Spitfire's wing. Did you know that? The Spitfire aeroplane. That's the profile of the wing. Do you know why they did that? Because these cars were built in the old factory where the Spitfires were built. And to pay homage to that, Jaguar took this curve here and used the same profile as the Spitfire wing to make this curve. Just in homage to the factory it was made in. But there you go. So yes, here we are. Here is our XK8 interior. Very nice. Let's dive under the bonnet so you can see what we've got under the bonnet. Beautiful. All right, now we're going to get under the business end of this old girl. There we go. Here we have Jaguar's 4-litre V8 AJ27 engine. Lovely. This is the slightly later engine because they started these cars in 96. And the earlier cars, they had vacuum-controlled, cruise control, 
Um, there was vacuum controlled. Well, I was going to call it the Vanus system, but this ain't BMW. The vacuum controlled variable valve timing. But in 98, 99, they revised the engine with a load of revisions. And they actually made the cruise control electronic and the valve timing electronic. So, yes. And being a 99, this car is on the cheaper road tax still. Because in 01, they changed them for emissions. So these cars are about 150 quid cheaper to tax than one what's a year newer. So this car is a 2000. So we're just crept in. But there is our engine in the XK8. Do you guys want to hear a cold start? Because that's one thing that will surprise you. You've seen this power lump, 4 litre V8. You'd expect it to gasp and burble and roar. Have a listen. This may surprise you. So you set up in the car. Let's start this one up. That is what a XK8 sounds like. Very muted, very quiet, and I'll tell you for why, because between them tower pipes and that engine, there's no less than seven exhaust silencers. Seven, kid you not. Two catalytic converters, one center box, two more center boxes, one here and one the other side, two back boxes one here one the other side seven exhaust mufflers to keep this v8 muted we're going to leave this one running because you never switch off a cold engine never it's bad for them right now we're going to move over to the x150 so just drink in this x100 there's the man cave van barely hear it running let's move over to this car here we have keyless entry we just have a jaguar key so the powerful mirrors have come out we can put these keys back in the pocket because this one has got keyless ignition but look at the interior on this one there we go Yeah, let's get in. We have a very, very different dashboard. I have this same screen, this exact same screen, in my daily 2006 X-Type. Of course, that X-Type there is the same year as this car. They're both 06. This screen is shared with that car. Would you believe it? Is this interior as Jaguar-ish? as my early car now i've got nothing against this car in fact i love this car i think it's beautiful do i like it as much as the early cars i don't really know but we're all brushed aluminium yes we have lovely leather seats lovely leather trim door cards leather trim dash but we have plastic brushed aluminium there's no wood in here it's all brushed aluminium this steering wheel is also the same as that X-Type. I have exactly the same volume controls, Jaguar voice control, source, cruise control buttons. This steering wheel is the same, apart from this little R bit, this steering wheel is the same as that X-Type again. So I can see where they have shared parts from a £20,000 car to a £60,000 car. Do you know what I mean? Brand new 20,000, brand new 60,000. 
same steering wheel, same screen. In fact, that X-Type, being a sport premium, has a better spec level than this car, but we shan't go there. We're looking at the XKR. But this is beautiful inside, but is it Jaguar-ish? Let's get under the bonnet. So, here is the X150 with its big gaping wide grill. The slanty back headlights. The gills in the wings. Let's get under this bonnet. What have we here? Here we have the heart of the beast. A 4.2 V8 supercharged engine. Also, this is very nice. Excuse the debris here. It's been sitting outside for a couple of weeks. But yes, there is our supercharged engine. That one, by the way, is still running. And you can't even hear it. There we go. So I'm going to set the camera up behind this one and start this one up. I think you'll hear a noticeable difference what Jaguar have done with the exhaust note of the original XK8, the Jaguarish XK8 against the more modern Jaguar, just six years newer, the new shape. You better listen to this one. So. We have push button start in this. Let's fire the old puppy up. That is the 4.2 V8. You can hear a noticeable difference. And we have a squeaky fan belt. X150 X100 Can hardly hear it So there I must admit this car does sound very very nice We'll let her warm up a bit then we can give her a little bit of revving Well, she's off cold start now. Just listen to this one. There. Now this one's warm. Let's give the X150 a little rev. So here we are behind my X100. There we go. There we go. The two Jaguars. So, which one do you prefer, guys? RX100, which is the original early car? Or this later car, where Jaguar went a lot more modern? That fan belt will stop chirping in a minute. This car has been sitting a couple of weeks, so... There we go. There we go. So that's the difference, guys, between an X100 and an X150. Shut these doors up.
I actually like, there are bits of this I'd put on that. If I could put that bumper on my car, I don't like them headlights. I love them headlights. If I could put that bumper on that car, the rear end of this one I wouldn't change. The rear end of this car I don't like as much. I don't like that Mercedes style rear light. These look way too much like a Mazda MX-5 to me. I'm not saying this is an ugly car, it isn't. But, I don't know, this just looks too European compared to that. This, it's lovely. And I say, day and night difference in performance, but this corner be there's 150 horsepower difference, but... Uh, would I change this for one of them? No. What I would do, if I could get my car to sound like this one, which to be fair is sort of, you know, £600 for a, £600 for a sports exhaust, which done away with a lot of silencers, and this one could sound every bit as good as this one. Jaguar just muted this so much with seven silencers. This one, I'm guessing there isn't seven silencers. I'm guessing there's probably four. But yeah, this car has got a lovely exhaust note. It really has. But yes, there are some, if I could change the front bumper onto this one and the exhaust note onto this one, to me, that would be the perfect match. I'm just not keen on them headlights. I'm really not. I do like the gills in the bonnet, but if you get the XKR, the supercharged one of these, they also have gills in the bonnet. Believe it or not, this is still running. All you could hear then was the aircon pump clicking on and the fan. Virtually silent. Where this one, you can definitely hear it running. Well, there we go. There's just a quick comparison of X100 versus X150, guys. I know not a lot of you don't like the car videos. There will be videos of the van. There will be videos of that Lister again. We're working on that. I've already made a video for that. Just haven't posted it yet. We're getting there. We're getting things done, guys. We're getting things done. This was just a video about the two Jaguars. Because that one has got to go back to its owner tomorrow. So I thought if I don't do a video of these two cars now while they're side by side, I never will. Because that will be gone tomorrow, the red one. And this baby. Now I'm afraid she's staying in my ownership. I could not bring myself to get rid of this car. I've said it before and I'll say it again. These are like nothing else to drive. I have driven hundreds and hundreds of cars working in the trade over the years, working in body shops, car body repairs, working for myself. I've driven hundreds of cars, BMWs, Mercs, Volvos, um, just to name a few of what I really used to drive, because I used to work for a body shop in Kent, and we did work for Mercedes, BMW and Volvo main dealer, and one of my jobs was going to pick the cars up and bringing them back to the body shop. So, yeah, and I can honestly say this is better than anything German, anything. Not saying the performance, but there's just something about the way these cars are finished, the way they look, the way they feel, the way they drive. It's just something different. Let's switch the old girl off. There we go. Yeah, there's just something about this car that I couldn't give up. And I never want to give it up, if I'm honest. But there you go. Right, I'm going to go, and we will see you next time. With a van video or a Lister video. One of the two. But there you go. You can hook your peepers on that one one more time before it goes. So drop in the comments, which one do you like the best? Obviously, if you're more into modern cars, you're going to like this one best. If you're more into older cars, you're going to like this one better. If you're into really older cars, you're not going to like either of these. You're going to say they're both rubbish. Maybe they are. But there you go. 
Anyhow, I'm going. Catch you guys next time. Bye-bye for now. Ha-ha! <laughs>